Hi guys, welcome to another video tutorial with me, Claris. I hope you guys are ready to have a lot of fun here. We're going to be painting a bookmark. I'm going to get right into it real quick. But before that, I just want to remind you guys, if you're new to watercolor and you're looking to grow and learn and use your learning time or practice time to create pretty little things like this, like bookmarks, um, postcards, what have you, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe button as you will not be disappointed. Okay, so really quickly, I'm gonna run through my supplies. I'm using my Princeton brushes. The main brush or the main wand for this video is going to be our Princeton petals in the number six. The whole basis of this video is to get you a little bit more acquainted with the petals brush so you can see all the gorgeous, lovely things it can do. I'm also keeping handy, well, we're not gonna need the zero, so that's fine. I'm going to have the oval wash for our wash. And then we have the Princeton Velvet Touch number four because it's one of my favorite brushes. So I just keep it to the side just in case. We've got Dalaroni. I'm using these two colors, but guys, feel free to get two colors of your choosing for this exercise. I'm using Burnt Sienna and Sepia Hue. Now, for paper, um, I'm using 100% cotton and I believe this is Bao Hong watercolor paper. Okay, so let's get started. I've got water handy on the side. I've got my paper towel over here as well. It's a little bit raggedy, but here's what we're doing. We're going to be mixing a good enough amount of our burnt sienna. And I'm going to have that on my palette over here. This lovely shell resin palette is by Lisi Arts and I'll link her below in the description along with the supplies as well. Please feel free to find her on Instagram. Okay, so I've got like a good enough consistency about a 30-70% and then we're going to get this is the next part. So make sure your brush is fully inserted into the liquid color. And then we're going to get a little bit of our burnt sienna just on the tip. Now, just to make sure that it's activated, I'm gonna get a little bit of water and drop that in here with my number four. And now that it's activated, I'm just using the tip of the brush to get some of this color on the tip okay so the rest of it is with that color burnt sienna okay this is sort of coming up so now what we're going to do is hold with the triangle pointed triangle bit up and i'm going to as long as this stays down and I'm going to start off with doing my first leaf. We're going to use we're going to use leaves for this session. Pressing down, I'm going sideways a little bit and we're trailing off. We're going to do that again. So I'm getting more of my color, dipping the tip of my brush, make sure it's not dipping the tip of my brush in this. And we're gonna go the other side and trail downward to kind of give us our stem. And we're gonna continue doing this. So this way you're getting more of a hang of how to use this brush and all the wonderful things that you can do with it. So now I'm starting a leaf from the stem going out. Notice how I have less of a, what was this color again? Sepia hue happening here, but that's okay. Just take your brush and drop that in some more if you really like that effect, or if you just love how watercolor does things naturally, just leave it as is. Either way, you should be good. I'm gonna do another one that's kind of coming off from here. So I'm tilting my hand a little bit downward and the brush pressing down and then lightly trailing off on the tip as I reach the stem. And that's how you get a nice little curved leaf happening. Now let's progress and do this a little bit more. Let's take it upward and really add some nice whimsicalness to our painting. So same thing, submerging my brush with the 
burned sienna and then just getting some of the sepia hue on it we're gonna go ahead and create like another stem now depending on how much you press down your stem can get a little bit thicker or thinner so this is a thicker stem and then I'm just trailing off the longer you trail off the more the bigger leaf you will get obviously so I'm starting from out going all the way down I know we're practicing practicing as we're creating something pretty but feel free to take a sheet of paper and try this out first so you can get those beautiful gradient effects to your heart's content. Get used to that and then get a sheet and practice doing, or not practice doing, just create bookmarks. Because why not? Now I created a stem first and then kind of went ahead and created my uh, my leaf to it. There's so many different ways to doing this. There is no right or wrong. I suggest you take the technique that I'm showing you and just go for it. Try out what this brush can do with this technique using your light color to for the full brush and then using just the tip of your brush and dipping into a dark color to get a slightly different hue. And this way we get our nice two tones and also work on how much you kind of extend your brush because then you are controlling the size of your leaves. Like I mentioned, the longer you extend, the bigger the leaf. And this will help you with your brush control. So many things that we kind of overlook when we first start because we just want to get right into creating things. So, hone in on this spend some time Rome was not built in a day do not be discouraged but definitely try and I'm going to pause this video and go ahead and continue creating the whole thing and I'll be right back to show you my end results all right so this is what I ended up with I know I said I wanted the oval brush there to do a bit of a background but I changed my mind last minute and decided to just focus in on the technique of how to get these leaves and how to sort of twist and twist and turn. Um, as you can see here, a lot of my leaves were kind of in the same direction and the same size. And so that's why I have this one really large one that is twisted up upward but this just kind of goes to show you how you can get different sort of results using the amazing Princeton Petals brush. All this was done with just one brush. Look what a cute little bookmark this makes. And again, you can do a background if you want to, very similar to one of my previous videos. And I'm going to link that at the end of this video. Y'all remember this one where we did a background, a pretty background, and then sort of painted on it. So similar idea over here. Heck, you could probably even do this pretty background and use, um, use metallics to get this sort of effect for your leaves. Try that. Let me see your work. Please post it on the Facebook group or if you put it on Instagram, I would love to see it. Please tag me. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that button and subscribe because there's more coming. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to hit that button and subscribe because there's more coming. Thanks, guys.